A good tow of fish flapping on the deck, a sight to gladden the heart of a fisherman. It looks like codfish. Actually, it's Pollock the Sea Sons too was catching. She's one of a fleet of inshore draggers that cleaned up on the Pollock in Fortune Bay last year. It's all over now. These vessels are barred from fishing in Fortune and Hermitage Bays. Cease Rideout and the other dragger skippers were accused by the inshore fishermen of destroying their cod fishery. After much heated discussion, the fisheries department decided the only solution was to kick the draggers out, and that's what they did. The Pollock Bonanza is over. It was a bitter pill for Cease to swallow. He's been fishing here on the south coast all his life. Back in the 60s, he was engineer on the Lavalie, the old converted minesweeper that made fishing history on these shores by landing tremendous quantities of herring. Those were bonanza years too. Even with prices less than $20 a ton, the herring fishermen did well. With the waning of the herring fishery, Cease Rideout decided to get a boat of his own and try his hand at the ground fishery. At the time, there didn't seem to be much future in the cod fishery, though. Everyone was getting discouraged. So when Cease heard about the federal government's experimental work on Danish and Scottish staining, he jumped at the chance to try it himself. It worked well. David and Todd were soon bringing in good catches. And that was the last we saw of Seas Rideout for a nice while. Then last fall, while filming another land and sea story on the Buren Peninsula, we heard about a tremendous new fishery. In fact, it was the talk of Fortune Town. The man who got this new Pollock fishery going, Seas Rideout. Much had happened since his seining days. Well, Seas, you were Danish seining for years, and eventually you gave it up. Why? Uh, we were Danish seining for roughly about five years, and. Uh, it was fairly good, good, fairly good fishing. Make, you know, you were surviving. You weren't making no big money or nothing out of it. And we started here, here town, this fishing port of bass. You know, people getting four and five hundred thousand up there for a couple of months fishing. And we couldn't do much with the Danny Sane rig, so we changed over to Dragon for to get up and get into the winter fishery. And uh, it took us a while before, you know, we got used to dragging. We weren't really used to dragging, and uh, it took a few years time we got, you know, everything organized, and we feel now that uh, we're glad we made the change now. You changed your boat too, I think. We changed our boat, yeah. We had uh, the 52-footer we were Danny Sainan on, and since then we've come up now to the 60-foot boats. We find it much better, we can go further and feel. And, you know, they carry much more capacity than the small boats did. The winter fishery off Port Basque, it draws boats like a magnet, for you can indeed catch a lot of fish in a short while, and at a time of year when prices are high. And so the sea suns raced here too for its share. But with the increasing fishing pressure, catch limits had to be set, and Cease Rideout found himself in a quota squeeze, both here in these ice-infested waters and later back home in Fortune Bay. Our quota cod didn't last. Uh, this year, for instance, we started off in Port of Bass. We had one million pounds of cod to catch, and we had six boats catching it. So it was more or less a free-for-all. Right? You, you ran into trouble, that's it. You were finish. And then when we came back to our own area, Tree Pierce, which opened the 1st of April, they increased our cod quota this year to 3 million pounds. But then they tripled the boats. Now, three, 3 million pounds of cod sounds like a lot, but it's not um, divided among some big uh, inshore draggers, is it? No, when you got 20 boats fishing them, uh, it doesn't last that long. And everybody trying to grab what they can quick, eh? So you, you, were, you were pretty worried then? I we were really worried. We were concerned because we didn't see no, nothing to look forward to. Uh, when our codfish was finished, uh, something like the 15th of April, we didn't have, I couldn't see anywhere to look forward to for the rest of the year. 
But now, with your quota of cod, I mean, could you have survived this year at all? No way. We couldn't even meet our payments on cod. And then we went, uh, when the cod was over, we were looking forward to going rig fishing. And then the fisheries department came up with a six small limit here for a while on rig fish, which closed off Fortune Bay, where we usually fish rig fish completely. And it closed off Hermitage Bay. And then they changed the, the line around from headland to headland, which gives us a little bit of more access to some red fish, but not the same as if we were with the fish on freely. So now your problem as a fisherman has been um, not to not to find the fish and catch them, but the problem has been getting enough quotas. The problem has been getting enough quotas to catch, not to fish. The fish seems to be more fish now. And we've seen in the past 10 years, but uh, we're not allowed to catch it. The quota system has got us uh, pretty well tied down where we can't survive, we can't make any money on it. There's no question Cease was a worried man last April. In fact, he was nearly frantic. This isn't a cheap boat to operate. It's certainly not the kind of vessel you can afford to tie up for any length of time. You've got to keep catching the fish. Codfish, redfish, it doesn't matter. As long as the fish are there and there's someone willing to buy it, any fisherman worth his salt will keep trying. But no one had any idea an entirely new fishery was in the making. This year when we were fishing the cod, we were going to deep water sometimes. We were coming up with some pollock, no great amount, but 10, 15,000 sometimes. Pollock, you know, amongst our codfish. So when we had nowhere else to go, we, I went back at the Pollock again, searching around for them, and uh, we found we were looking for them in the daytime when they were night fish. And after we got at it for a couple of weeks, we did uh, figure out some of their habits, and we found that we could catch them. So you, you did your own experimental fishing, then, really? Uh, we did on the Pollock. We did. And then the price was down, the price was five cents. So we knew we couldn't catch them for five cents. Right? So we, we done some experiment ourselves. We caught some and sent them to Nova Scotia and they gave us uh, like up to 14 cents for them. And once we got 18 cents and then some of the Newfoundland fish buyers got interested and they offered us 10 and eight like that. And we started selling here rather than shipping them out to Nova Scotia. And then the pollock seemed, uh, seemed to come on more and more. We found more all the time. You got more and more encouraged as you got fishing. Well, we got more. As the price got up, too, we got more interested. You, you, you had to sort of pioneer the markets, too, then. You had to find we, your markets. We had to pioneer pretty well all the markets because, like I said, most of the Newfoundland companies wasn't even interested in them. And like I said, for five cents a pound, it wasn't worth our while fishing them. Eh? Once we got the price up to 10, and at the present moment now it's 14, so it is good now. See, now the fishery is good for Pollock. How good? How much have you, have you been catching? <laughs> well, it's something I used to feel our dream about. Uh, the last month we've landed a, a million pounds of Pollock. It's a lot of Pollock. That is so. That's the, that was never heard of before in Newfoundland. I, I, we never ever dreamed that we could catch that much fish, but. Uh, like I said, they've been there, and uh, we're like where we can fish them night and day. We've been, you know, fishing them fairly heavy. Um, so t tell me now how much you, you get in the tow or how much you get in, in a trip, say? Well, a trip for us is usually around 100,000, 105,000. And we've had up to, well, we're not bragging or nothing, but a couple of tows we've had up to 60,000 pounds for one tow. The last two weeks it has been low and go. Like I said, it's something you dream about. But uh, seven days now, the last seven days past, we've landed at uh, 511,000 pounds of poly. <laughs> well, that, that's a, I mean, there are a lot of boats your size that they're lucky to land that in a year. That's the, that is the, well, some of the boats can count on that pretty well as a year's work. But 
I know we're just, you know, usually every morning between 8 and 9 o'clock there for a while, we were coming in, you know, go out that evening, 5 o'clock, and the next morning we'll be on our way back in. We'll so you, you're a pretty happy man right now that things have turned around in your favor. We are happy because, like I said, we were looking at dire straits ahead of us, you know, and like the Pollock have really saved our year for us. Tell me about the pollock now, uh, see, so what kind of a fish is it? Uh, not many Newfoundlanders know it. It's a fairly new fishery, really, isn't it? Well, the pollock was around about 10 or 12 years ago. The trap fishermen used to get a, quite a few pollock. They used to solve it then, but there, was, there wasn't that many for dragon. We never ever seen them. They're, they're fast fish, they're really fast, or something like a salmon. And uh, we find we have to, uh, you know, use bigger nets and tow harder for to catch them. It's their habits you gotta watch because like I said, some nights you go out you fish them in the nighttime, and the next night you could go back and there's n isn't any at all and you say, Well, you know, they just disappear, but we find they come uh, fifty, sixty fathom off the bottom and they stay there and when there's really sunlight, sunny day they'll come and play on the surface like a mackerel. So we see them there and we can watch them and when they disappear from the surface you can tow for them and You'll find them on the bottom. Catching pollock. It's a new fishery here in Newfoundland, but not elsewhere in the world. In fact, on a global scale, there's more pollock than codfish landed. How much pollock is there in Newfoundland waters? We don't really know. Nobody bothered much with it before. It's a species we're not familiar with. But Cease is gradually getting to know the habits of the pollock. We've been studying their habits, really, and even uh, watching, like, on a nice day, you see the bunch of seagulls, uh, like, looking for Caitlin, while they be looking for the scales and that which come off of the pollock, where they're on the surface playing around. They leave a lot of scales. And so those areas we usually mark, and uh, one, in the nighttime, we go back to go on the bottom, we go back to those areas. And, uh, well, 90% we've found the pollock you know, pretty well every time when we go back to this area, this is where the pollock are at, where they played that day. They will go on the bottom there the same night. So now some people might say, see, right, or there'll soon, soon be a millionaire here at the fishery, but I guess it's not all profits. It's not not always rosy. You've got to no, we, we, we needed this boost on the pollock for even to survive this year. Because you're looking at our boats, it's close to $100,000 a year payment on them, man. That's interest and payment. You're looking at a $50,000 gear bill, you know, $65,000 for fuel, $16,000 for insurance. So you add it all up, uh, we need, you know, for us to survive, we need a lot of fish. And you need a few good years, too, to compensate for the, the scattered bad year you're probably well, if, we're, if we're at it for the past two or three years, just breaking even, you know, and well, making, you're making a living at it, but no, not really no money. you got money's worth, but you got no money. So when you have a good year, you'll probably sink your money back into the boat or the fishery. Well, you, most of it has gone back into gear and different things that were, we couldn't afford to have before. Like we get different nits, different doors, and... We find uh, now where once you are ahead, then uh, yeah, it makes it easier, right? Like we're using different trawl gear now. We got a new knit on there now, new doors. You know, that's, that's seventeen thousand dollars just for knitting doors. Which uh, if you were just surviving, you wouldn't have the the fishing capacity as what we got now. What about other boats now? Are there other boats with you, or are you the only one at the pollock? We were the only one for a while. We've had a couple more boats here, and they've been having problems with their gear and different things. But right now there is uh, there are three more boats came in this week. Uh, they're bigger boats. They're 65 footers. And, you know, my boat is a 60 footer, and we can't compete with some of those big boats. 
But now, are you worried about, uh, I mean, you pioneered this, are you worried about other people coming in, taking it over, and squeezing you out, maybe? No, we're not, because we, uh, you know, we do the same thing. We're here till fish summers. Any way we can get there, we will be there. So if somebody coming in doesn't bother me at all. If I can get my shear, it's all what the other fellow catch, good for him. And so the fleet of inshore draggers fished the Pollock hard this summer and fall. A new industry developed. Some of the Pollock was trucked to Nova Scotia, but mostly it went to St. Mary's Bay for processing, where it created a lot of employment ashore. Some thought that some of the fancy electronic equipment on the Sea Suns would be a waste of money, but not the skipper. If they're just uh, going to the bottom or coming to the bottom, uh, you can tow without seeing anything on the sound. There's like uh, usually if you're towing along, you don't see no fish on the sound, or you'll take back to nothing near, eh? But those colored sounders now, you can turn them way up, and where the pollock is just going to the bottom or coming back, we get a light blue faint like. And times you'll get a good set of fish without even marking the one on the on your sounder, eh? Which your sounder will pick it up because it's dense all through the water everywhere. So you know, you know, if you tow along, you'll get a good set of fish, although you don't see none on your sounder. Well, see, uh, fishing now is really a business, isn't it? For you, especially. I mean, you've got a big investment, and, and you've really got to make money at it. We, we use it exactly as a business. It's like a few years ago, fishing was, if you went out and say you made $10,000, most of the time you come in and get this and get that and spend it, you know, not worry about the boat like. But right now, we're using our boat comes first. If there's anything left over, then well, we know it's, you know, we're not playing around with it. So whatever profit you make, you, you first plow it back into the boat and then, then you live on the rest. It's first gone back into the boat and if there's any extra money left, well, you can spend it happily. Like, you know, you know nobody going to come next week and say you owe me this or you owe me that. But we do our, like I said, once the boat comes first, and it, it's tough sometimes, but once you get once you get her rolling and then get up there, it's okay then. Now, as you know, a lot of Newfoundland fishing have, have, have lost their vessels over the past few years, especially. And uh, I guess you worried at some times, have you? We have worried. Uh, we, Like I said, we were worried going back again to April. We didn't see nowhere to turn to uh, where we could catch enough fish for the survive. The fish was there, but the quota system, we could not catch it. And, like, we had to go into different species. You know, finding those pollock there, and, uh, as of yet, they got no restriction on it, so we've got a boost, which we every fisherman hope for, I guess. Well, since 1986 is over, how much pollock did the Sea Suns 2 land? Uh, pollock and all different species, we land approximately uh, 3 million pounds. No, no that's, yeah. that's quite a year, isn't it? That's now, a lot of those fish are cheap fish. You know, first when we started fishing them, they were, you know, they're not all expensive fish. I mean, we started off on five cents for poly, and the red fish was fairly 11 cents. So, I mean, on the last bit, the prices did get really good, but uh, there's a lot of that fish, like I said, was cheap fish. But the price of pollock is really good now, I understand. The price of pollock right now, there's no problem to get up to 25 or 30 cents for it. If, but the thing is, now we can't catch it. Inshore fishermen, uh, at one peak of time there, we had 16 boats fishing uh, between Michelin and uh, Pass Island, and, and we'd done a lot of night fishing, so everybody from Steel Cove area or Harbor Britain area could look out and see all those lights there in the nighttime, and they felt that we were taking all their fish away from them, which uh, we don't think we were. Uh, mostly we were fishing pollock, and the, the way the bottom lies there, we were fishing like 120, 110 fathoms of water, and most of the codfish is in 75 to 80 fathoms of water. And they've done a lot of complaining, I guess, to the Department of Fisheries, and uh, as far as I understand right now, we're, our tr traditional fishing grounds, we can't go back there anymore. Uh, 
So you won't be able to fish on the grounds you were on this past summer? Well, the redfish has completely cut off to us altogether. And now if this line uh, they're proposing there, which uh, they say it is in effect right now, so the pollock fishery is finished in this area. You know, maybe we will find them outside on St. Peter Bank, I don't know, but once you get to go off 25 to 30 miles, now our boats, uh, the weather, I don't think, you know, you'll get out there one day a week, probably something like that. It'll take a day for to find the fish. And, uh, so I don't think we'll see any more happy stories about pollock. Are you a bit upset about this, Cease, or is it inevitable that the inshore fishermen would, would complain that you're I, ruining I the ground? I don't think the inshore fishermen, because I, I worked with them all my life, and we've never had any complaints from them. I don't think their intentions were to, you know, more or less force me out of the fishery. I don't think that's their intentions. I but think probably you get some more meetings, they might realize, maybe they didn't realize what they'd done to us, you know. So you and the other boats are pretty upset over what's happened then, are you? Well, it's not a matter of being upset. It's that we're pretty well cut completely. There's no fish in this area we can catch at all. And what are you going to do about it? Is there anything you can do about it? We're going to try to get some meetings up where maybe we could get a permit to, to go inside. And uh, if the inshore fishermen feel that we're tearing up their gear, we'll put an observer aboard. And if the Department of Fisheries is not willing to pay their wages, we'll even pay their wages for them just to prove to them that we're not interfering with their traditional fishing. So you'd like to be able to have meetings with the inshore fishermen and anybody who's interested in we clearing would. the up? We would, yeah. If you can't fish Pollock now in 1987, what will you do? Well, we're like, we're, we'll be going to Port of Ass now the 20th of the month or so for our cod fishery. Usually we have, the, there's a million pounds of cod fish up there between six to seven boats, maybe eight, it all depends. The South Coast boats now you're talking That's about. That's the Tree Pierce boats and mm -hmm. the Cadican boats can fish on the same quarters. So if we go up there and only get a small season and come back and can't fish the pollock or the, the codfish, which we traditionally done, and the redfish, then I don't see uh, much, well the only thing then I think I'm thinking about probably changing back over and going back to Danny Sainan. So you may be out of, out of this new fishery? We may be out of the Dragon outfit, yeah. A week ago, the Sea Suns 2 left Fortune Harbor and turned her nose to the west to steam 160 miles or so to Port of Basque to take part in the winter cod fishery. Last year was the best year ever for the vessel. Three million pounds of fish, most of it pollock from Fortune Bay. It's been a memorable year for the Sea Suns. Spectacular landings, good profits, a new but controversial fishery created, a fishery that may have died in its infancy.